This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. The BFM Breakfast Grill, connecting you to the top people and ideas. Presented by U Mobile. Today in the Breakfast Grill, we are talking to Tan Sri Lim Hock Sun, the Executive Chairman of the Affordable Home Developer, LB Asbina. Tan Sri, welcome back to the Grill. Now, you just uh, reported uh, quarterly earnings, a very good performance for you. You were quoted in the newspapers as saying that you were elated with the performance. Um, I think we can start perhaps with your, um, perhaps an assessment from you on the health of the property sector. Because although you might be doing quite well in your segment, in the mid-price segment, what about the overall health of the property sector? Overall property sector has been uh, affected, I think, sure, sure. For us, doing a bit, I must say, well, a bit, a bit better because of the uh, uh, products, we call the products or houses we sell is very affordable range. And then we sell in a good uh, location. No, we cannot, not like last time, no, people are simply built on a different location. So we build what people need. No. That's why I say overall, I think the be, property will be affected. Except the, uh, why we can say the industrial part is quite okay. Industrial part, the uh, industrial properties are doing okay and then the affordable range but high end I think will be definitely affected. If we can talk about specifics here, let's talk about momentum, sales momentum and conversion rates as well, right? Perhaps from LBS Bina's perspective and also from maybe your anecdotal feedback from your other peers in the property sector. I just want to say about LBS uh, since uh, to talk about last year when the government uh, uh, announced the uh, lockdown on the March 18, we call it MCO. I think we have, every one of us, I mean, most of us have lost the direction. Then after that, we come up with the CMCO, RMCO in the last year. And when we, at the time, we, uh, we set the target of 1.6 billion at the time, uh, because the pandemic still not arrived yet, not so, arrived so fast. And the, uh, in, because of this uh, lockdown, we re- review and revise our sales target to 1 billion in, the, in April. By end of the year, last year, we have 1.2 billion managed to achieve. You see, when you come to the this year, this year, I think first five months, momentum is quite good because the uh, even though the MCO started in March after the, the number of COVID-19 spikes, but we have doing quite well in the first five months. But the June, first June, first week of June, the government announced the full MCO. And then government announced after that later come out with EMCO, it will definitely affect the sales. But nevertheless, I think the, we, the company come up with the strategy of uh, digitalization, the uh, marketing. Then we managed to, uh, as of today, as of today, yesterday, we have managed to achieve uh, 738 million uh, sales with SMB sign. And we had the uh, on uh, booking of 588 million ringgit, which I think is uh, only converted after the uh, agreement side or after the agreement side. Now, now, they, now we try to use the EM, e-signing method. So I'm sure there are many companies are doing the same at the moment. So when you talk to customers, right, Tansri, what is their sentiment? Are, are they back in, you know, because it's, it's been, what, at least seven years since the last property boom in 2014. It's been a long time since already. How is the sentiment on the ground in terms of property purchases? I think the sentiment may not be as good as last year, early last year, but uh, but people still need houses, I think, for sure. But I think uh, what I can see for the last two months, I talk about last two months, June and July, uh, sales has been a bit slowed down. Uh, slow down. I think the momentum will start to pick up this and that because uh, I think the uh, people are really start to get confident because the number of cases you see yesterday have been start to drop. Vaccination had already go uh, for the adult more than around go to seventy percent, and I mean eighteen years above, according to the, the report from the uh, government. That I think the people will come back, and I also tell the people that the uh, the prices of how will go up because the material price had have rise. So as such, I think the people already start to think to buy only for those who need house, not for speculation. So I think I believe by end of the year, I think the confidence level will come back. People will come and buy the house. So for the benefit of your shareholders, Tansri, um, I, I understand 11 of your projects are slated for launch this year. Um, and actually, the, the concentration is predominant, predominantly in the Klang Valley. Um, you've also deferred your Pahang project and your Johor and Perak projects were scaled down. So 
I mean, are you being strategic about your launch uh, rollout timeline and in terms of maybe where the recovery is? A client really have, uh, have been a very uh, big earning for the group. And uh, you can see the few major we have, we like, uh, you know, they keep the cyber south uh, in the in the cyber jaya there. And we had landed properties. That is what people will buy. Then we have the project in Aram Pratana in Ichok. People also uh, also landed properties, people will buy. And then we had industrial park in the industrial park, I think the, for the industry in the uh, Uten Shalam. Then also we have Bukit Jaliu. Bukit Jaliu now uh, doing quite well. And of course, the claim with a, after that, then we have the project in Batu Bahat. But surprisingly, Batu Bahat also captured a very good sale. As for last year, Batu Bahat had cornered the, had, we had obtained a hundred million sales in Batu Bahat. And Cameron a bit slowed down and Para also uh, doing quite slow. But we are still cautiously uh, thinking what to sell for this year, next year coming in. Uh, well, the thing is, at your work sites, I think you are right now running at 60% capacity because you're complying with the government's rulings on, on, on that front. When you expect the work sites to be up to 100%, and in fact, also in terms of pandemic preparation, what about the vaccination rates among your staff? I think as far as company is concerned, we are very concerned about the company, the company staff. I already asked the HR to look into it and you make sure the, uh, all the company uh, or the staff are 100% vaccination except one or two percent had not done because of due to health reason. And as, as workers, we also encourage them to go for vaccination. So that they, all the site workers are, have done the vaccination, except a few, uh, one or two hundred people. Now we are still monitored to get the appointment for them to do. You know, you see when you get the 60 percent uh, workforce, but very fortunately, we our, uh, we don't need uh, workers, so much worker at doing the, because we are using the, IBS, the precast system. But as for 60% the uh, workforce, it definitely will uh, slow down the progress of work. The worst for the last two months, the supply chain. Supply chain uh, material had affected the uh, most of the construction industry in this, uh, in, in, in this Malaysia because the uh, uh, METI had not approved a certain factory are not allowed to open due to the requirement by the METI. So in terms of your ongoing projects, will they be delivered on time, generally speaking? And I think also secondarily, um, as the leader of the company, Tan Sri, will you compel your staff to all of them take vaccines? And if they don't want to take vaccines, would you ask them to pay compensation to the company if they don't, pay, if they don't take the vaccines? I think my, I, because the, uh, normally uh, several months ago, I say I told my HR, encourage them to, to do the vaccine, to go for vaccination. Then uh, after that, I say, you all advise them, advise them to go for vaccine. Now, even during the monthly uh, Zoom meeting, I don't think you better go for Zoom meeting. Otherwise, you cannot come back to office. Otherwise, you take leave. Because I always say, uh, because of one person who didn't go for vaccination, then the whole company will affect the email. You see, not fair for other people. So also not fair to your... I'll try to advise them because... If you don't do any vaccination, then you affect us, affect the whole, uh, your, your family or this. I think that very fortunately, the company, all the staff agreed to go for vaccination, except for one, a small percentage due to their pregnancy, due to their health reason, they, uh, they are, cannot go for vaccination. So I think we encourage them to do, advise them to do, ask them to do eventually this is thing. I think many companies will do the same. Is for the sale of the whole thing because of you, the whole thing cannot go. Now, even we go to buy a test kit, we go buy a test kit, make sure that every two weeks, everyone may have to go and test to this and that. Even I advise the, the staff if you don't be too selfish, when you feel that you are very uncomfortable, go for a test. If you find that you are positive, please inform us so that for those we are close contact, so we will take precaution to call the, to caution to provide prevent the spread of the this the COVID nineteen. I think people this is what we the HR had given them a directive for this event. And Tantri, earlier you said that you've got bookings of over five hundred million ringgit, right? So for some of these are unfinished projects. Do you think the delivery timetable will be disrupted by the fact that you only got sixty percent of your staff working? I think this uh, five hundred this five hundred eighty eight million booking is got it during this. Uh, MCO, FMCO, because we cannot go to see them. You know? 
So through the through our our digital marketing, through our virtual showroom, through the uh, through all sort of marketing thing, they are uh, and then or our incentive to do do what uh to do Roma do then we pay two hundred ringgit can own a house and also have our own uh company incentive or campaign on the February of what twenty twenty. I think the lucky draw will be come out on this Saturday. Although we won the first prize, we won the the proton or this thing car or this thing. So this is thing that we have. So this five hundred eighty eight million we have up to uh, uh up to yesterday booking. Uh, we will get them to sign e sign to as soon as possible. Uh, e signing you now if you e signing also can and all these things. But of course during this time, um most of the project. Uh, we we are supposed to hand over to certain houses that has been delayed. So uh, we very fortunately uh, we still can uh, hand over the house within this year. I think more than uh, many houses this year, but still we in our S and P time. There's spare S and P time, so I'm still sure there's not a problem for us. I'm talking this morning to Tan Sri Lepok San, the Executive Chairman of the Affordable Home Developer, LBS Bina. We'll come back up to this, Tan Sri, and talk about your project in China in the Zuhai International Circuit Area and, of course, your Malacca Gateway Project. BFM 89.9. You are listening to the BFM Breakfast Grill, brought to you by U Mobile. This morning, we are talking to Tan Sri Lim Hock San, the Executive Chairman of the Affordable Home Developer, LB Asbina. Now, in terms of Zuhai, which is your China project, Tan Sri, the MOU between you and Zuhai Chuchao, for them to buy your 60% stake in the F1 circuit there, expired in March this year. What's happening on that front? I think we still uh, see where well, the problem is that, that we, when we sign the MOU, then the very, uh, the, the, the difficulty for, is the problem is that we cannot go to China to talk, to negotiate. And because since uh, early January last year, until today, I am not able, we are not able to go back to China, go to China to talk to them. As such a thing cannot go through. Uh, but we're still open, uh, still open. And before that, also we are also open for the our transformation program, which had approved earlier. We still continue to pursue to get the conversion, everything done. So I think we cannot go back, and this is why we can do, we can say. Because sometimes we uh, when we negotiate something, we can't talk in the phone, we can't talk in the zone because this is involve a big money, you know, that's what I can say. So we have decided we also explore or going to go ahead with the development. That's what we can say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the market is waiting for them, for you to talk about but maybe the disposal proceeds. What kind of big money are we talking about in terms of quantum, Tanshri? This one I don't know yet. Like, this one we can't say. Because <laughs> this one is very big money, but the number of the quantum we cannot say because this is uh, depending on both sides agreement or that. How Nobody much? can see it. What is the huh? what is the land size there? What is the size of the project property value? Uh, One million square meter equivalent to two hundred and forty five acres, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, uh, okay. one hundred sorry, one hundred and uh, I mean, one million square meter they call it. Okay, so that's about two hundred forty five acres, is it? One hundred forty five. No, one two one hundred six. I forgot this. I <laughs> cannot remember. Okay. okay, so it's potentially a few hundred million ringgit potentially. I don't know. That's why we cannot say but where the when the number is fixed and we sign an agreement, definitely we will make the announcement. Uh, but besides this, also we also explore the uh, possibility of continue to look for the investor in China to join in to develop the area together with Zuhai, uh, Zuhai the partners there. Yeah, so what's happening on that front? Because these are concurrent discussions you're having with your you know various parties there, right? Right now, what is your point of view? What What is your thinking? Uh, are you going to sell or are you going to go and monetize? What are you going to do? I think it de depends. Uh, we also look at the depends uh, the, which whichever proposal is good for the company that we are talking about. The wife can say. Uh, but it's still early to say because these are things. Uh, uh, once the, the proposal came in, then we will discuss with the management. Then we will put in the LBS board for the approval. That I can say. At the moment, you can't say anything. But these are things... Uh, uh, if I say something when we mislead to the market, then I can say this and that. Oh. Okay, but of course, uh, China is also going through some issues right now. The regulatory clampdown, digital side. Uh, of course, the biggest developer there is Evergrande. They've been having some debt problems and, you know, it's been sending shockwaves through the, through the property sector there. Rana, what is your sense of the health of the China property market? I think so. 
but I, I, I believe the China, the, the China GDP grow, I think in whole, the whole world up during this pandemic, uh, uh, China recover very fast from the pandemic. Uh, and then their economic growth also coming, GDP also improve. So, uh, but it will not be like last time, the uh, so vibrant, but the property market is still there. But as for Zuhai project we have, if it's, we are only, uh, we, beside the property, we may have the uh, commercial development, tourist, tourism, everything. That, that is why we get uh, maybe a uh, different from this uh, uh, property development. Is the F1 race still being conducted there? Uh, we still, have, not F1 race, uh, we call it the, uh, you call it the international race. Uh. F1 race, they mean only have in Shanghai. So we have an international race, model race still in, but uh, I think it's still to the MCO, only due to this COVID-19, uh, uh, the thing, uh, business has been slow, it has been slightly affected, I can say. Uh, because uh, the crowd, the, this crowd also, the government tried to prevent the crowd. Tan Sri Lim Hock San, the Executive Chairman of the Affordable Home Developer, LBS Bina, is on the grill this morning. Now, moving on to your, your Malacca Strait project, you've got a, and you've signed a reclamation and development of reclaimed land agreement with the Malacca State Government. Right now, uh, in fact, that was inked in April of 2021. So right now, you're going through an EIA and feasibility study um, assessment. What is the status of those two studies? I think we still continue to look into to study on this thing. But currently, we also look into the potential investor. We are in talk with the two of uh, several investors who are keen to develop this uh, so-called integrated port. Like maybe in the port, currently we are thinking of uh, LNG, thinking of the port, thinking of the, the uh, industrial park on commercial. It's too early to say because and again, because during this MCO, a lot of things we can do. We cannot travel, but we cannot travel to talk to this uh, the investor. The only thing we talk through the zone meeting, through this thing. So I think we're still in the talk with them. So we want to do it the, the one of the good part and the, uh, doing the integrated industrial park and the LNG and commercial so that to bring in more investor from overseas. So currently, we are talking talk with the Chinese investor uh, from China. That we hope that by doing that, we uh, they come up with the expertise, come up with the expertise, set out uh, to try to uh, attract foreign, more foreign uh, the fat people, the Chinese people, to set out a factory in the Malacca, then just to create the employment in Malacca. That's why we are doing that. Well, exactly, Malacca and Guangdong province, exactly where Zhuhai is located. They, you, both of you have a friendly state and province relationship, so that's going on. But some people say that property is quite a good reflection of the state or health of, of the country. Now, Malaysia is going through its political issues now. Um, what are your investors and what are your potential partners saying about Malaysia and their comfort levels with Malaysia right now? I think what I can see that China already expand Internally, they need to go overseas. The only thing they are very concerned about the uh, political uh, situation in Malaysia. And they also worry about, they worry about once the, the political situation, be like, tell them Malaysia is stable. And they also, uh, they tell them Malaysia and the China relationship is good. And not to worry, I think they, uh, they are being, uh, we have close to feed them the uh, positive information to them. So I think, I think the uh, information to them are quite positive. I think you can see, even with this type of uh, situation, I think many people, many Chinese investors still come to Malaysia. They sure that they are still confident in the Malaysian the investment. So I don't think there's a, there's a problem in the, for the Chinese investors to come to Malaysia. And because Malaysia are so uh, pro-China, pro -China, pro-US, it's an international company in the country. Well, we don't, we don't know for sure because we, in the last two governments, this one included, that policy clarity has been lacking. Um, so, so if you were to say, home in and say one or two things that you want to see from a policy perspective from this or the next government, what would it be? The government, the present government and the government is to follow to continue the policy. I think we, uh, this is what I can say. Huh? So, uh, of course, the, uh, when the Chinese investor want to come in, they have to look for the, the uh, reputable company. But before they come in, they also want to study 
and they make sure the approval has been obtained, they make sure the policy is uh, fair to them, I'm sure they will do uh, this thing. I'm sure this, uh, the, the government will continue with, uh, this present government will continue with the policy what we had before. Okay. Well, <coughs> actually, I, I think, uh, you know, when I look at your market value of LBS Bina, it's been basically unchanged in the, the last eight years. I think you listed in 2013, your market value was 737 million ringgit at the time. Today, your market value is about the same, 734 million ringgits. I think the next, the, the key thing is the next growth phase for LBSB now. What is it going to be from the perspective of the shelter value? As far as uh, LBS is concerned, that uh, uh, of course today we have 738 million uh, uh, S&P uh, sales plus uh, 588 million uh, the uh, booking and uh, we are confident that we can achieve uh, 1.2 billion this year or maybe more depending on how the current situation whether this uh, COVID-19 will, will prolong or not that's a thing but I'm sure that this COVID-19 will end very soon not not end like now we are ready for COVID-19 that's for sure so with this side of uh, uh, unbuilt sales uh, we have 2.23 billion at end of uh, August, 31st August, and with the uh, strong sales, I think the, we, we are cautiously optimistic the property sector also will recover, then the share, I think, at least can maintain at current value and maybe uh, depending on the stakeholder, the stakeholder with the share, the investor, if interest with the share, I think the share may have to, to write depending on, but of course, they are looking into the, the company earning, as well a dividend policy. If you are, you still maintain the earning well, uh, if you still maintain earning well and the uh, 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 continue with our dividend policy of thirty percent after the profit, I think the investor may come later to join to to invest in LBS share. I think the share will be hopefully the share may may do well by end of the year or next year. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing, Atanshi. Property development is still over, well, I think about 95% of your, of your revenue. Some developers like Ma Singh, uh, they've gone into rubber glove uh, manufacturing. As I see that uh, Tan Sri Dr. Lim Wee Chai of Top Glove is a 6.8% shareholder of um, LBS Bina. What about new growth businesses? Are you going to consider other non-property businesses? Yeah, I think that of course we we will still adopt the we still uh, focus on the property development is our main and bread and butter. Uh, we are still looking into other type of uh, investment. Like say what say pop clack, no sorry, the Malacca, Malacca Port is one of the uh, company will go in to go and to sign with the Malacca government to do the integrated port at this stage is first thing. And we are also looking for other uh, other other industry. So, so you're like going to be looking at uh, ex analyzing maybe port management would be a new business for you? I think this maybe this is one of the things we look for, but we still study the how how this uh, uh port development can 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 enhance the the sustainable the earning to the group. That's what we can do. But still early, but we are still studying the whether this uh, feasible this and that. And secondly, we're also looking into the tourism. Tourism now, not now, maybe in next year. Like if we had a, a many uh, land bank in Cameron Highlands that we are going to do a tourism. All this thing is the constant, uh, cons and we also have land in the in the Kotong, in the in the in the Kending, in the Kotong area. Yeah, so we were thinking of doing the tourism industry in the near future. Uh, it better is earning. Uh. Okay, well, fascinating port management and maybe tourism for new businesses for LBS Mina. Thank you for talking to us. That was Tan Sri Lim Hock Sun, the executive chairman of the affordable home developer LBS Mina BFM eighty nine point nine. The Breakfast Grill is brought to you by U-Mobile, unleashing unlimited potential every day.